Hello boys and girls and welcome to my preview and predicted lineup for this weekend's North London Derby. I don't care what our form's like. I don't care that we're going into this as the underdogs and that Spurs are top of the league. This is the North London Derby. Do I even really need to hype this game up? If these players feel half of what we do about this fixture, then believe me, they will go and put a performance in. The one game in the calendar I want these players to turn up in. The one game where we have to show up, where we have to fight for everything. Do not, and I mean do not, put some of the kind of performances that you've been putting in recently in this game. It won't be accepted. It simply won't. We have to go and win. Yes, ultimately, you've got to win games and three points and everything else. But I honestly, in this game, could not care less how you get the points. Just go and get them. I don't care if it was a boring 1-0 win with the scrappiest goal going after an absolute awful game of football. Three points and victory over those mouthy, shadow-dwelling wankers is what I want from this game. I've had to sit there all week doing previews and speaking to some of my mates that are Tottenham fans and the arrogance and the cockiness and that hype about themselves like there's some big bad team prime Barcelona. Are you actually mad? I get that you can have some kind of confidence. I get that you're in good form and you're sitting where you are in the league. Rightly so. I also get that you're favourites for the game. But the way some Tottenham fans are carrying on. As if they are this prime Barcelona. Like we should all bow down to them. You've got no chance. I'd rather shit in my hands and clap than acknowledge anything about your club. I can't stand anything about that club. If you're a Tottenham fan and you don't feel the same way about Arsenal, then I think you need to ask, are you really a Tottenham fan? I come from a family of Arsenal fans and through generations where you understand what this game means. Your hatred for Tottenham is real. And again, I will point out, there's Tottenham fans exactly like me that feel the exact same the way that I do about them, they do about us. It's real. This game is massive. I don't care what kind of masterclass it is. I don't care what kind of performance we put in. Just get the win. Get the victory. Shut these idiots up. Put them back in their holes where they belong. Put them back in their shadows. Honest to God, please, any player, if you just so happen to come across this video and watch it, just please understand what this means. Please understand what we need you to go out and do. I can't say no more. I am absolutely hyped for this game. People will sit there and say about our form and how poor we are and everything else. And I get that. But in derbies, form goes out of the window. You know, even when we were invincible, even when we had the best team in the whole of the country, we still knew that on certain occasions, Spurs would turn up and they would beat us. That's what I'm saying. Form goes out of the window. You know, you look at the, the game last season, for example, in their new stadium. Perfect start. Brilliant goal, Lacazette. And a stupid error. You know, lets them back into the game. That's one thing that we've got to eradicate for this game. Can't make any mistakes. Can't have any passengers. We all have to turn up. The kind of performance that you saw on Thursday is the kind of performance that we need to put in in Premier League games. And then you can sit there with your chest out and your shoulders up and talk about the way that you play. Because you will do it on the bigger stages in the Premier League. And not just in the Europa League. I'm telling you, Arsenal, turn up for this game, man. Turn up, please. 
You know, just like when we played Manchester United at Old Trafford a few weeks back now. They've just come off the back of beating RB Leipzig, PSG. They're in brilliant form, talking about how they were going to slap us left, right and centre. I remember doing the podcast when Flex was there and that, and the arrogance and the cockiness. It's exactly the same right now. So go out and put in the same kind of performance. Because only one team deserved to win at Old Trafford that day. And it was us. And we did. And we got the win. And people go, oh, it was a penalty. I don't care. We won. We got the three points. That's what matters. I can't say no more. Game is massive. Team lineup's going to be massive. Formation's going to be massive. And we will find out whether it's enough on the day. I'm buzzing for it. So with that said, let's go and get into the starting 11. Um, now, in terms of the formation, there is this part of me that thinks we will revert back to the 3-4-3. And I can see why. Um, but also at the same time, I've got this sneaky feeling that we will play a more adventurous lineup and more of a 4-3-3. It's very evident that's what Mikel wants to do. Okay, we haven't got the personnel, but these players can actually stand up. We've certainly got enough within there to play the formation and to pick up points and victories. So with that said, I'm going to go with this lineup based on the 4-3-3. Um, and then, yeah, we'll see what happens. And um, as usual, you can let me know in the comment section whether you agree or disagree. Starting off in goal, Burn Leno. End of story, end of discussion, pretty straightforward. Probably the easiest selection that you will have to make on uh, Sunday. Now, the back four. First of all, on the right-hand side, I'm going to go with Ainsley Maitland-Niles. Um, I know he played really well in the um, centre of the pitch um, against Rapid Vienna. But on that side, and with the threat that Spurs have coming down the left-hand side, I want to see anybody... But Hector Bella in there. Cedric's a shout, but I just think that the athleticism and the physicality of Maitland Niles is what would be important. So that's what I'm going to go with. Now, um, centre defenders, first of all, on the right hand side, David Luiz. Now, I'm picking these players based on the fact that they are available. I don't know whether they are or not after his. Um, head injury last week. There was no concussion or anything like that. So he will be available. Um, and if he is, then he has to start ahead of Mustafi, Rob Holding, etc. Um, so that's what I'm going to go with. Now, alongside him, Gabriel, along with Bern Leno, the easiest choice you will have to make. It's as simple as that. Do I need to explain why he's playing? No, I don't. You already know. Gabriel. Um, on the left-hand side, Kieran Tierney, and he's going to need a big game. Um, we all laugh at Serge Aurier. Um, but over recent weeks, he's actually been playing really well under Jose Mourinho. And Kieran Tierney's going to have to watch that side and he's going to have to nullify that threat. Um, so straightforward for me. And uh, Kieran Tierney goes there. Now, the midfield. And um, first of all, I'm going to go with Mohamed El Nenny. And um, I had this discussion on the podcast with Robbie and whether somebody would actually sit a man mark Harry Kane. I don't think they will. But if there's a player that's got the energy, um, you know, and that capability of staying close to someone for a course of 90 minutes, then it would be Mohamed El Nenny. So for me, it's a no brainer and I'm going to be putting him in there. Alongside him, Thomas Partey. Back in training. Remember that, back in training. Um, a lot of people, including myself, thought that he was not going to be back until the end of December, January, um, at worst case scenario. But he is back in training already. And if he's available and we can start him, he starts all day long. What a boost it would be to everybody if he starts because you think of his performance at Old Trafford, he was colossus. And he's going to need to do the same again. Um, with the likes of Ndombele in there, with the likes of Hoiberg, Thomas Partey, don't care what any of you say, is better than all of them. End of. And him there 
massive for us if he can play and he's fit enough to do the job, that's for sure. Um, but that's what I'm going to go with. Now, the next player in that three, I need a bit of um, creativity. I need a bit of um, ability to link the play and shift left to right um, and be pretty much covering a lot of the areas of the pitch. And I'm going to go with Saka on this one. Not Danny Sobias, not Granite Shaka, and not Joe Willock. So for me, it will be Saka. I thought last time out against Wolves, he had a poor game um, by his recent standards. But his ability is for everybody to see. We all know what he can do. Um, and he's a you know, homegrown boy. He should know what the North London derby means, man. Just like Ainsley Maitland-Niles. He should know. I'm also hoping that Kieran Tierney, with his experience of derbies when Celtic were playing Rangers, he will know what this is all about, derbies, the intensity and everything else. So um, that's what I'm going to go with. Now, the attacking three, and this is where there will be some debates. And first of all, on the right-hand side of the three, I'm going to go with Willian. And I was very, 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 very tempted to put Reese Nelson there. But the reason why I'm going with Willian is because I actually feel this is what Mikel Arteta will go with. And it's based on Willian's record against Spurs, albeit as a Chelsea player. His record against them is superb. He always turns up against Spurs. I've had Chelsea fans that I know message me over the last week and say, Willian will turn up. Against Spurs, he will turn up. They're like, don't worry. This is the one for him. And sometimes as a player, you have teams and moments where it just always works for you. Spurs seem to be that team. And because of his experience and um, because of that record, that's why I'm going to play him. Um, now, on the left of the three, I'm going to go with Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Now, there will be people talking about we need to bring him out of the team or this, that, the other. Listen, he's still our best striker by a million miles. If we can get him into the game and create chances... We will score goals. It's as simple as that. And I've got no doubts whatsoever that he starts this game. Um, the last of that three, I'm going to go with Alexandre Lacazette. And I feel that, again, when we play big games against teams like Spurs, he turns up, he scores. And he does score goals against Spurs. And scored their last season as well. Scores against them at the Emirates. So he's a big game player in that respect. And um, this formation is not rigid. It's very, very versatile. And it's got the flexibility to be able to interchange these players. So Oba can come more centrally. Lacazette can drop deeper into the 10. And what I would like to see is Lacazette drop down. So it's kind of a false nine sort of area. And then he links up to a four-prong triangle, which will be Saka, Partey and El Nenny. It allows your fullbacks to get on, which is exactly what they were doing um, when we was playing against Rapid Vienna. Try and push them back the other way. Oba, if for example, we're pushing down the right-hand side, he comes across. If we're going down the left-hand side, likewise, Willian comes across. It's all about the flexibility and rotation. If you saw on Thursday in that game, one moment Pepe was on the left-hand side, then he was sent up, then he was right. Reese Nelson was sent up, then he was left. Eddie and Ketia would drop. Um, Lacazette would drop. It was very, very precise and it relies on very quick, intricate movement and one-touch football. We've got the players to do it, they now need to go out there and actually show they can do it. So I can't say no more. That is my predicted lineup. And as usual, let me know in the comment section whether you agree or disagree. Would you go with that 4 3 3? Or for this game, would you revert back to the 3 4 3? And if you do, what personnel would you put in there? I think a lot of this side can stay the same even if it is a 3 4 3. There would have to be. Some slight adjustments in the defensive areas. Um, maybe Kieran Tierney dropping into the free and Saka going as a left wing back. 
Um, Ainsley is a right wing back, and then you would have Partey um, and El Nenny sitting, and then the three staying the same as they were. Um, or you could look at maybe Kieran Tierney going out as a left wing back, Saka coming out of the side, and Pablo Mari coming into the defensive area. So you have a three of Pablo Mari, Gabriel, and David Luiz for argument's sake. So there's so many variations as to what you can do. And I think this side could pretty much be the 11, whether it's a 4-3-3 or a 3-4-3. Three, three. That's the versatility of it. So let me know in the comments section. And I can't say no more. I think you can tell that this is the game that I'm buzzing about. I'm really hyped for it. And I just hope and pray this team don't let me down, man. Please, I'm begging you, don't let me down. If you're new around here, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you smash a like on this video. And I will see you lot soon. I'm out of here.